what happened? You know, guys, I take a little bit of a break, take like a month off, and I left you in charge. Okay, I left you in charge of the crypto market and mining, and you just crashed everything. What well, I mean, what happened? I'm just messing around. So I took a little bit of a break, but I'm back having some fun. And in this video, I wanted to take some time to just get myself caught up in everything that's happening. We'll look at pricing, charts, GPU availability, profitability, uh, the merge and how all that's going, look at some network difficulties, and just hang out a little bit. Uh, really low-key video. Uh, don't have too much of a script, so I'm just going to wing this one. But hope everybody's been doing well. I've missed all of you very much. And if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. I do a ton of videos on crypto mining and all things mining related. So what I think I wanted to start with is just the pricing and taking a look at it here. Man, it's looking red. So Bitcoin down at 20 K okay, Ethereum at 1100. Personally, for me, this is just part of being in crypto. Um, I've been in it uh, coming up on five years, and it's just part of what happens. That's why a lot of if you're going through this cycle for the first time, it's just it's really important to learn things so that you can approach the next cycle uh, maybe in a little bit of a different way. And I know with the Ethereum stuff that might change things quite a bit, but we'll see as time goes on. I'm feeling pretty good about it. So. Wanted to take a look at the Ethereum chart, and this is the last month. So I essentially stopped. Uh, I did my like last video around here, end of, of May, and uh, it, Ethereum still two grand, looking pretty good. And then I step away, and it crashes down. What did it get down to? Like yeah, sub nine hundred dollars. Can't you guys let that happen? It's unbelievable. <laughs> One of the next things I wanted to take a look at is some profitability, just to see. What GPUs are still profitable at what electric rates? And I um, wanted to do that. So let's start with 123070s, some of the most efficient uh, GPUs you can get for mining. And we'll take a look at Ethereum still and only leave all the default values in here. We'll do 10 cent electric rate. And let's see how much you're making on a 12 card 3070 rig. Um, if you want to see my build on that, I'll link it up in the card above. So on ETH right now, you're making still profitable $6.39 a day. Uh, let's see maybe what electric rate you would be at where you would not be profitable. So let's go to 20 cent electric rate, still profitable. Let's go at 30 cents. Are you still profitable at 30? Let's check that out. Calculate. 30 cent per kilowatt hour. You are not profitable. So yeah, I mean, that's still, you're probably like what, 25 are probably still profitable. 25 cent per kilowatt hour. I mean, your break even is going to be forever, but yeah, even so like, so let's just say 25 cent per kilowatt hour and below, you're still profitable on 3070s, which is why I always, always, always talk about efficiency being so important. Um, let's do some older cards. I know some of you guys are still rocking those 580s out there. Again, all default values. I know what to mine's not like the best with its uh, default values, but we're going to use those today. So 10 cent per kilowatt hour. Scroll down on Ethereum, still making 70 cents per day. 70 cents per day. Hopefully you've had those cards for a long time and they're just making money and you're not worried about break even. But I'm 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 worried now. If we go to 15 cent, I don't think you're going to be profitable anymore. Yeah, you're losing a, a, about a quarter a day if you're at 15 cent, which is probably around US average. It's probably like, I think like 13, 14, 15 cent per kilowatt hour. So RIP to any of you 580 owners out there, even if you have had to turn them off. That's just the name of the game. That's why I always always, always talk about efficiency and getting the most efficient cards you can that you can afford because it really saves you in times like this. And we'll see even what is coming up ahead. So as talking about GPUs, I, I've really been out of the game for a little while as far as like, because I didn't want to buy anymore. I still have some. You guys can see uh, sit on the shelf that I have to get mining. Um, but I was curious, like how easy are they to get now, especially with the uh, LHR stuff all being unlocked, uh, you know, what, like over a month ago, two months ago now. So taking a look over on Newegg's website, I mean, you can get a 3060 Ti. You just go buy one, $550. This is actually the first 30 series card I bought when it came out. I got it on launch day. Um, that was one of my first YouTube videos I ever made. So this Gigabyte Eagle still rocking. 
I uh, love that card, actually. So actually, let's do this. That's 550 bucks. So how long would break even take on that thing? Back over to what's mine. So those do what, like 61, 62 mega hash, I think. So we'll put 62 in for like 120 watts. And let's just say you're paying 10 cent electric rate and you bought it for 550. Um, and we'll use Ethereum here. So yeah, yeah I mean, your break even is <laughs> about a thousand days, uh, which is just bear, you're in bear market territory. That's just what it is. And you're still profitable though. You're making 57 cents per day in profit uh, on that GPU. The next thing I was wondering is like the Founders Edition cards, can you buy those now? Because those are the cheapest 30 series cards that you can get. And for mine, they're great because your break even was much sooner. And so I went over to Best Buy's website and like you get, there's a 3080 Ti up here. It looks like, but the good ones you still can't get. 3060 Ti's, 3070s looks like you still can't get. I don't know if they're available in the stores at this point or if they're just still that difficult to find. And then eBay, let's look at the secondhand market, which I'm sure has just been getting flooded with GPUs considering people have turned off their mining rigs or sold off their mining rigs. It just always happens, it happens every single time. Um, and you can look, I mean, 3070 is a good one. If that still works, that's $372. Founders Editions going for about 500. So we're looking like between four to $500 um, for these regular 3070s. Um, so they've definitely settled back down in price. Obviously, guys, this, this all follows the market. If anybody was telling you anything different, before graphic card pricing definitely follows mining profitability. There's just no two ways about it. I know things were a little more complex, uh, complex this last year or so with supply chain um, and all that stuff. But still, I mean, you can just see availability uh, is so much better and prices are so much better. In my opinion, largely because of mining profitability, I'm sure still slightly because of uh, supply chain stuff. So. I wanted to figure out where the merge was. So last I left off, um, it was going on the Ropsin test network and it looked like that was successful. And that was about a month ago. And I just kind of really been unsure where the difficulty bomb's been, uh, where the merge has been. So let's take a look at some of that stuff right now. So I really like using this website, whenmerge.com. I'll link, give a link to it down in the description below. Uh, it tracks all this stuff. So I was on here and I see that you know, we did uh, Robson successfully back on May 30th, and I was tracking that. And then I was also looking at the uh, difficulty bomb. If I head over to this chart here, this is the Ethereum average block times. And you can see right now, this is the last three months, the block times are at 16 seconds, I think, right now, which is very, very high. Uh, it's because of the difficulty bomb. If you go back Let's look at the last three years. You can see times the bomb has went off. Uh, this is back in January of 2020, hit 17. And it's just, you can see little blips where it's gone off and been delayed here uh, as well. But right now, we are, we're up there. That's the bomb. We're feeling it. So it looks like the devs have decided to delay the bomb. Um, that's going to happen in this gray glacier update, which uh, looks like it's happening like tomorrow. <laughs> I guess is when this is going to happen. It's going to push the bomb back, which should uh, give us a little more profitability than I think we've been feeling because those block times went higher, which means there's less, less blocks being produced, which means there's less reward being paid out to miners. So what we'll have to watch is if it becomes more profitable, do we watch that network hash rate go up again because more people are now turning their mining rigs back on? Um, or if they maybe pivoted and mined something else, do they mine back to Ethereum and everything just kind of settles out anyway and we don't really feel the effects that much. But back to the merge, it looks like the next thing up is the Sepolia testnet. And if you remember, we have to do that one, Rorley, and then it goes to mainnet. So um, what I was looking for, it's got a countdown here for Sepolia, which looks like it's happening in about a week. Um from today, I was making this video, the merge will happen on there. So it looks like it's about five weeks between each test net. I don't know if that's going to hold true, but at least gives you an idea of maybe when the merge might happen. If it does five weeks of Polia, five weeks 
after Sepolia took Worley, and then how many weeks it's going to take to go to mainnet. Um, but it looks like they're making progress, and I'm glad that they're going to give us a little more profitability um, with getting the difficulty bomb delayed. And take, taking a look at Ethereum's hash rate, I'm over on two miners. You can see, I mean, we hit over one uh, petahash throughout all of May and April, and then with the profitability drop, it's just come down so much that we're now sitting at 841 terahash. And that's people turning off miners, selling GPUs, or perhaps going to mine a different cryptocurrency. Um, and what I'd be interested to see is as the bomb gets delayed, is, does this start going back up again? Or does it start trending down? Or, or what happens there? You know, the other thing I was curious to look at, I know we're talking heavy Ethereum right now, is how some of these other projects are doing um, with their network hash rates. I saw on earlier on what to mine that um, Ergo is coming up pretty profitable. And I want to check that one out. Let's see if that network hash rate has gone up, it's gone down, stayed the same. It's kind of stayed the same. Not too much happening there. And let's see what else uh, ones we can check out. Let's do Ravencoin. I really have heard many people talk about Ravencoin in a while. And yeah, it's just down, 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 down. And then let's check out. Probably the last one I want to do is Flux. Where's Flux at? Let's look at that network hash rate. Let's look. Yeah, you know, everything's trending down. Little spike up at the end, but still trending down just like everything else. So I think that's everything that I wanted to catch up on. If there's anything that I missed, please let me know down in the comment section below. It's maybe something I should know that's been happening in this last month or so. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, hit the like button if you did. Sub to the channel for more GPU mining content. Join my Discord if you want to chat. Links for that and all social media are down in the description below. And as always, please take care of yourself. Take care of each other. I missed you. And I'll see you in the next video.